Well, what's the crack? You're all very welcome to episode 97 of Bookshot for Sunday. Yeah, I know. Sunday, the 10th of February 2019. What's going on, lads? How in the Christ are you? Apologies, this one's a bit late, but uh, it's just up to me ditties. It was, it was just thrown off a small bit too because we didn't get a record until Friday night. We are hoping to do it on Thursday, but we didn't get a record until Friday night. So, you know yourself, it just got thrown sideways. But you look at it. It's there now. It is there. It is up there for you to listen to. Um, gigs this week coming up. Obviously, there's a couple of sold. Uh, there's a couple of them bingo loki things. But I'm in City Limits next Saturday night down in Cork. So, if you're in the Cork region, pop along. It's always a, it's always a dynamite night. I think McSavage, was he there? McSavage, I think, is there after... I don't know. I think he was there the other night. Um, it's always... Yeah, it's just always fucking deadly, lads. Deadly. I won't keep you keep you too long. This isn't a particularly long one because um, myself and John, we were trying to get it recorded. He had a dog run out of the house issue. So we got about a half an hour in. Um, but you know what? He's... Yeah, he's a sound skin. Uh, also, thank you to the Patreons. Another payment has come through. Fair play to you. I'm a new Patreon on this week. Luke, hats off. Shout out to Luke. Jumping on board. That's the fucking chat. You're all becoming producers of the show. Like that. I, I don't... I hate rattling on about it. But it just... It has to be said on everyone. Because you've new people jumping on... Listening all the time. And you know yourself. Look at... It's the same story. If, if you want to contribute to the podcast. And you want to get free access to... Exclusive access. I should say to the back catalogue of the Tom and Jerry show. Sign up to the Patreon. There you go. Simple as that. Uh, if you prefer to... Con- you know... Contribute to the podcast some other which way... You can go to the Tea Republic shop and buy buy some shit for yourself. That goes straight. I mean, I'd sooner the Patreon because that's actually more realistic and you know it actually they don't take like ninety seven percent off you like the Tea Republic do. But you look at it, at least you have a cool T shirt going around the place anyway. Um, and like that for any of the gigs, go to tomomahony dot com if you want to go to any of the gigs or have a look at. I normally put the ticket link in there too, so you can go straight through that. Anyway, moving on to today's guest, uh, one of the coolest. Coolest people. And you'll even hear it in his voice. He's one of the coolest voices as well going. Uh, John Lynn. He, yeah, we partied over in Edinburgh together. He's a sound, sound, he's just one of those super, super cool guys. An unbelievably talented comedian. Very, very good actor. He's been in a good few movies and stuff. Like, he's got his actual picture on IMDb. Um, which is, yeah, it's more than can be said for me. It's just some grey avatar that I'm there. But uh, I'm there. I'm fucking there. I'm on IMDb. For like two things, John's on it for about twenty, and uh, we got a good, good old chat in for half an hour. You can see the, you can hear the club starting to start up in the background. People are being let in and all the rest of it. But um, we had a groovy chat, so sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy. John Lynn, thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, you, Tom. Uh, would you yeah, would you just one second would you just hold that up a little closer there I sure would how's that is that close oh, that's, for you that's Tom? fucking beautiful that's yeah, absolutely you beautiful you want me to go with the old crook okay yeah good. just p- point in one hand God, you look so pro at that in fairness to you uh, yes well I just uh, I want to get sponsored by Heineken one day and I keep thinking if I show myself to be a loyal <laughs> customer maybe it, eventually they'll say that guy has you know he's been one of us he yeah i mean it's it's the dream to get drink sponsorship isn't it yeah. like, like yeah. i i can't think of anything if anybody wanted to sponsor this podcast yeah i'd let a gravestone company sponsor the podcast but ha, ha, hand on heart it's drink and anybody I ever talked to that has oh, a man, pod, i anything. definitely have room for a big h in my private <laughs> No problem. No problem. John, vitamin H. Lynn. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'd give like a sliver of it, like a tiny percentage to some sort of appropriate children's charity. Yeah, yeah. But bar that, it'd be <laughs> Vegas. Well, to be fair, to keep excellent hair like yours, you're going to need moolah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like You probably have the best hair in Irish comedy, I would imagine. Three men have had to die for this hair. I've had it fused on. <laughs> You know what I mean? But their deaths weren't in vain. Of course they weren't. Jesus name. Christ. I, I can't even look directly at you for longer than more than like five, six seconds. You it's know, Tommy, that is the nicest thing you've ever said to me in all the years. And we, yeah, we've had good times though. Mm-hmm. The last time we, we were kind of partying was in Edinburgh. Uh, oh, I was yes. open for Tom Stade. Yes, yes, I remember that. That was a good night, yeah. It was a good night. I, uh, were you living in Edinburgh at the time? Or yeah, was I mistaken? I, I, I was there for about, yeah, I was living there for about six months. How was that? 
It was great, but uh, just having to hit the road all the time. Yeah. Like when you're gigging in England, it was a lot of train journeys. So what? What inspired? Because you you were in you've been in London years, and what inspired the move to Edinburgh then? Uh, well, a few things. One, I was doing the festival that year. I was kind of a bit like wanted to change things up. I was seeing a lady, right? You know, myriad different factors as there always is, and we could take a six month lease. We knew someone who oh, was willing. Oh right. To, uh, so we said, yeah, let's give it a go. You know. Yeah, and, there's uh, worse places like in there. Yeah, oh, it's a great town. Yeah, like got a ball there. But I was in London a lot for work, and I happened at that time start getting a shitload of auditions. So I was of course, yeah, of paying course, paying yeah. a fortune on that train. Oh up my and down god! To go for these auditions, none of which I got. <laughs> and then I moved back to London, thinking, "Man, I'm so busy. I just can't afford not to be in London." I got my ass back there to capitalize on the heat, and didn't get one more fucking audition. <laughs> Not a screed, just <laughs> disappeared. I was like, am I actually, is this like, a, am I in a psychosis sort of a thing? Now? You, you know, like, am I dreaming this? You would have been what? great in Game of Thrones. You have such a Game Man, of Thrones. I was look. in for Game. I auditioned for Bronn, yeah. Mm. Oh my God, you would have been class as Bronn. Yeah. And, Much better uh, than fucking Robson and Jerome fella. Yeah, and then the singer got in. The singer. singer. That's a tough I obviously appeared of. They're like, can we buy this guy as a dude who chops people up? And then they're like, nah, let's take the 80s ballad singer. <laughs> he looks like he can <laughs> fuck them up. Lynn <laughs> looks like he bore them to death, <laughs> telling his stories of the tales from the mercenary road. Oh, man. Because you were, because when I met, when we met in Edinburgh that time, you were. You, you were telling me you were going, Tom. Uh, yeah, I'm fairly pissed off. We were having a pint at the bar. It was, it was over. You were so you were close to getting a big role at something, but you wouldn't tell me what it was. So I left oh, about that. That was a different thing, yeah. And then that didn't. Oh man, yeah, that was a killer. Uh, if you go on about these things, it looks as if to be honest. Like even in that Game of Thrones one, your man's amazing in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. like, I'm going. Like that dude was always going. He crushed it. Um, but no, that other thing, yeah, if I start bitching about it, it's like I'm bitching about the person who got it, who I know, and it's great, but, uh, you know, I love that guy, but I love me more, so <laughs> I would have, uh, When did you move to London, that. then? that. Like, uh, out, when did you vacate Dublin? Oh, I left Dublin eight years ago. Did you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I just felt, yeah, when I was here in Dublin, I was... Oh, I loved it, but I was com- a bit too comfortable. You yeah, I'm with you, yeah. When you're like that big enough fish in a small pond sort of shit, you yeah. know. And uh, I kind of felt I wasn't getting any better at stand-up. Right. Just breezing through the gigs, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas, so yeah, when I went to England then, because you're gigging in all sorts of places from like, what are essentially working men's clubs to like hipster venues in East London, you know? Yeah. Like, so you... You really got to, you learn a lot. So, yeah, that's why I kind of, la- I, I, man, I, I was devastated. I love Dublin and, you know, I just happened to, there was a good few Irish lads actually in London at the time. They all disappeared pretty soon after that. <laughs> <laughs> but it like, it like between the stand up and the acting, I mean, they tend to go one hand in hand. I mean, I don't know how, I had never intended to be an actor, but it seemed TV roles seemed to come. Yeah, you know, for yeah. one reason or another, I don't know how. Like, you Tom, with your big John Wayne dick. <laughs> the balls just come my way, John boy. I don't know. I wasn't even trying. I just kind of, you know, started being magical on the comedy stage. And then, boom, people said, I want you in my project, Tom. And that was exactly how it happened, John. Because, <laughs> do you know what? As soon as I started then actually perking my I'd ears like up. I'd like to thank the Academy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as soon as I perked my ears up, I went, John, oh, maybe I could do this. And going to auditions, not fucking one audition oh, yeah, I yeah. thought I landed a sweet one there a while back uh, it was a Guinness ad and the fucking money was astronomical like oh yeah, yeah. and all oh, was happy days man that's Fassbender was do you remember that yeah Guinness oh ad? yeah he swims across the ocean that was Fassbender yeah that fa- was Fassbender and that got a big hunk of change and then his career petered out after yeah that. he died in his hole but you're looking I mean Fair play to him for giving it a go. I think like. he's a barista in Hoxton. 
<laughs> he's got a sleeve tattoos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think that's has he got a has he got a top knot now? I think uh, he has a top knot, doesn't he? Now, yeah. I'd say he can have anything he goddamn wants. Yeah. He can have a top knot. He can. I'd say he he can employ people to grow top knots. From it's him. hard to believe he's from Kerry, isn't it? Like you know what I mean when he. You know, he's, he just smiles so much, like, and he's he's just ridiculous. Hello? You're all right? You're all right? Yeah, come on in with the water. No worries at all, man. So, you know, it's a working live comedy club. There you are. What happens giant, before show? To, this giant is, bottle, of, bottle of water that's of no uh, use to either one of us. Yeah, this shows you the glamour of the stand-up world, so... <laughs> Certain <laughs> gigs you do, they come in like they got riders. There's like all oh, gourmet nuts from some yeah. homestead up by Wind Lake Windermere <laughs> in northern England, or some cheese from a certain area, France bordering Spain. Of course, yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah. Climates. Whereas the Laughter Lounge, Dublin, they bring in a pot of water. <laughs> a pot. That's what it is. A fucking pot. Tap of water <laughs> and ice. There you go, motherfuckers. Enjoy. Go make people laugh, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Although, actually, I am drinking a gratis pint here, so. Well, yeah, in fairness, like, you know what I mean? That's, yeah, it's all right that way. Like, and, and to be, like, a joke about, like, not even taking about, but every so often the realisation, and I'll have comedians on, and, you know, we can crib all day long, because we're quite good at fucking whinging, there's no doubt. In fact, we not make me, money Tom, from... Not me, no, not me, relentlessly positive, not unbreakable. You. We've actually, you've come up a few times in the podcast as being the most positive. In fact, sickeningly positive. It's the only reason why I have you on, just to get some, there's some evil in there somewhere. I need to get it out of you. But the fact that, like, you get paid to talk, isn't it ludicrous, like? Yeah, well, I used to get paid to talk as a school teacher. Jesus. This is better. Yeah. What age group were you teaching? (coughs) Oh, Secondary school, you know, up to the leaving cert, all right. Were they motherfuckers? Were they all right? Ah, it's some good lads, you know what I mean? I remember my first ever uh, day. Actually, yes, it wasn't my first ever day, but it was my first day taking this class that were renownedly. <laughs> these boys had left scars. People in the staff room went into this sort of Saving Private Ryan post traumatic stress <laughs> catatonia. Look, when they these kids had come up, and I had to cover them then for a day, and all the teachers were like warning me and telling me, "Look, whatever happens in there, don't take it personally." You know, like it was, you know, don't let. It was pretty much like people coming up to me just at dispatches during the day, going like, "Don't let them break you. Hang in there. Be strong." So I'm going, "Oh my god!" You put your DP on the legs and everything just to go in. Up. So I walk in, and all of them to a man are pretending to be monkeys. <laughs> Every one of them. And I'm like what this fresh-faced, like, early 20s teacher. And they're just jumping around the place, like, rubbing their armpits. Ooh, ooh, you know, all this mimicking that they're throwing shit at each other because they saw it in some documentary, like, Sweet Jesus. mess fighting with each other. And I thought, right, I'll just sit at the desk and eventually they'll tire themselves out and I'll just start with the lesson. <laughs> Real cool, calm, collected. I went, boom, that's your plan, John. That's your strategy. So I sat up the top in silence. And those motherfuckers kept it going. <laughs> I don't know how they did it, man. Until the bell rang. What the fuck? Yeah, and then they were just like dogs that had been out on a big walk. You know what I mean? They were oh all bollocks my. lazing about the place. And talking to a lady at the next class said it was like a dream. But all oh just passed out. But they God. kept it going. That's but who won? who won there, John? Do you think, because you, they, they uh, knackered them, like, did they win, did you win or did they win? Because you didn't at any point go, hey, boys. Well, of course, but I am biased. I see it as a uh, heroic detente. Well done. You know what I mean? Well yeah. done. Yeah. We Jesus. went head to head and, you know, come out bruised, but neither of us <laughs> gave an inch. That's fucking, that is dogmatic if I've heard. <laughs> Pat McDonald knew he was done with his teaching days when, you know, he got a really, really rough school. And he gave some young fellow a bit of a talk until one day, and the principal even pulled him aside and said, "Listen, I wouldn't. His lad is a fairly, his dad is a fairly prominent gangster. So that was day one. By about day seven, he went into the class, and his young fellow was he had the window open, and uh, oh no, he's, he wouldn't open his book. And he says, "Come on, Jeremy, we'll call the lad. Open your book. Come on, we're going." And the kid actually stood up and went, "Ah, fuck this!" and pulled open a window and just jumped out. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I had the whole, I remember blocking the door, going to the palace because it was a Friday. <laughs> going, that's it. I'm going to keep you here half an hour because you were such pricks. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have, have to make a stand. Like, have to get these boys, hit them where it hurts. And next minute, the window's open and lad started hurling bags out the window, just <laughs> scrabbling out there. Like the building was under attack. <laughs> and like the amount of the boys who got out, by that point, I went to keep the rest of them in, just highlights that nine lads are after jumping out the window and there's nothing I could do about it. So I just went, oh, fuck this. Better write some jokes. Some good ones. Get the hell out Had you started it. comedy while you were teaching? Yeah, yeah. I, I remember uh, I was uh, teaching in St. Vincent's there in Glass and Avenue and I did Oxygen Festival. Do you remember Oxygen Jesus, Festival? yeah, yeah, yeah. A oh, man, it was rough. Like, dudes were, like, off their chops in the audience. Yeah, like, I can remember. Like, out of their minds. It was a bit chaotic. And my lads from the school all came down to watch... And when the guys started heckling me and stuff, the boys were all like leaving. So they're all nearly 18. Boys like just strolled about the tent and were like, shut the fuck up for the sir. The sir is talking. No. Yeah, Did they? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I come off and they're all like, you better buy us a drink. <laughs> Didn't make any money that festival. I was like, sure. <laughs> Would I rather come away with dignity and no profit? Totally, you're, you're damn yeah. right. I like I, I, I saw no downside to that part yeah. at all. To all no, there, like, no, yeah. I was like, I'll buy you boys drink till this card stops beeping. They, like you are a legend in forevermore. Can you imagine that? Imagine going to a festival when you're 17, and one of your teachers is actually rocking the comedy stage. I rocking is probably too strong okay. a word because I've say. I've been to, I've done these festivals and whatnot, oh, and man. you never truly rock it, rock it. You know? Well, actually, now that you say it, man. <laughs> My memories reform. You always forget the shitty bits. Don't oh. you? Well, I Just don't. I don't know. I, I did. Um, I did. Well, what's the other one? Uh, picnic. I did yeah. it two years ago, and the time before it was lovely, full tent, at a n- normal enough time, like five o'clock. And this was just as the All Ireland hurling match had started, and uh, they had a big screen, quite literally two hundred yards away from the tent. Tent emptied, and we're left with like 150 people in a tent that can take a thousand. Mm. And at least 75% of those are sleeping face down into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, 25 minutes set there, please, Tom. And you're like, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm going to say some words, but that's, that's all that's going to happen. Some words. And they had, they, at least what they had for every other act was the, um, the big screen outside. So people go, oh, there's a comedian. Let's go in and have a look. But they'd switch that big screen to, um, to the hurling match, so it's like, yeah, oh, I'm, yeah. Who's that popped in there? Was it Peter? Was it? Was it? Oh, yeah. fair play to Peter. Try and get Peter. He'd never come on the podcast, though. Was he not? No, because people find he him fairly backed out the door. There. There, yeah, it's there's kind of a there's a people Homer that, that are, yeah, there's people back. People frightened of incriminating themselves with stuff on podcasts. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, now you're making it sound like he's a lot of stuff to incriminate himself no. with. Who Tell knows? Me all, Who Tom. knows? Tell me all. I'm not saying anything. Um, you got photographic evidence. <laughs> I me, have. Tom. How do you think I'm getting gigs here so often? <laughs> and tell us, because you... Apply you, a little pressure. You've been in a good few mov- movies at this stage, haven't you? Yeah, I've been in, I've been in a few, yeah, in a few. Um, they've all been, I, I've enjoyed them all, yeah, but... Uh, have you ever gotten, have you, because I had McSavage on one day and he talked about being totally, um, I suppose, intimidated because it was all grand and then all of a sudden the director arrived over and it was George fucking Clooney. Right. And he yeah, went, hi, yeah, yeah, hi, yeah. David. And in a kind of a, through his teeth kind of way, passive aggressive to McSavage as well. So McSavage totally froze up. He's like, fuck. Yeah, like, is yeah. there, because I've never done movies or anything like the, that. Um, the Pacific thing. Oh, I d- <coughs> There's some war thing. He was playing like a... a no, it's a Catch-22. That's it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, Catch-22. Yeah, I for that, man. Dave got it. Good he, on him, That's man. I'm sure Good a ton of comedians him. apparently went yeah. for it. It didn't sound like it was a comedy part, though. He was playing like a, you know, a... a 
and a doctor carrying out an autopsy. Yeah, it sound well, it's, it's it's the novel, you know. So it'll be it's one of my favorite novels. I go on. McSavage is a great actor. Man. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, he's no, he's brilliant. Very good. Yeah. When I first started in stand up, I was doing all sorts of profit chairs and fucking Shakespearean, like Where are you? Fuck, all sorts of mad shit, making no money, losing loads, all that. And Dave was like ripping the piss out of me. Yeah, look at you with your actory shit, you fucking. Yeah, you bollocks. <laughs> no, and like, then you're a fucking sellout, Lynn. Look at you with your. And uh, then, and I never realized Dave could act or like we were palling around. But man, when he started, I was like, Jesus Christ, when he's doing those sketches, yeah, like, this yeah, guy yeah. Is brilliant. And yeah, good to see him going on to that. Oh, yeah, man, I've never had the uh, that sort of met one of those heads. I did do a movie with Rafe Spall, you know, oh, yeah, Spall yeah, 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 and uh. Man, Rafe, I was like, oh, I bet you this guy. Christ, you'd have to be an actor with a name like Rafe Spall, wouldn't you? Well, yeah. He's never got, like, Rafe Spall is never going to work down the spar or on the council because you can't get away with a name like Rafe. (laughs) Not in Ireland, anyway. You wouldn't get away with a name like Rafe unless. Man, after being called John, I think I'd take Rafe out of it. Man, I grew up, I was was born in 79, so the year the Pope. Is that what John? Yeah. Well, well, no, my parents didn't give a shit about any of that, like, but uh, everyone else on the road did. So I grew up, there was nine of us hung out, six of us were called John. Because <laughs> of Pope John Paul. So <laughs> I'd take Ray for any day. Like, how come you haven't uh, how come you haven't done that then? Because you, you're you're are you in like the actors guild or what? Is there another John Lynn that you didn't have to do that, obviously? Like what name would you pick? Because Lynn is a good name. Although for some reason everybody in comedy calls you Linner. I'm like, there are no other Lins really in Irish comedy. I always wanted to be called Linner. When I was a kid, because we were all called John, everyone got their nickname. Of course, their yeah, second yeah. name, you know. Right. And a lot of the lads had like, you know, you know, whatever their name was, like King. So it became Kinger or King O. I thought I'd be Linner. I was loving the sound of it. But you know what those pricks call me? <laughs> Linda. Linda. I'm <laughs> Linda. That was my fucking nickname. <laughs> It's your fabulous fucking hair too, like Jesus Christ, John. That's what I put it down to. That's all envy. it is. Pure, Pure envy. envy. Fabulous hair, like you, Jesus. Even at Christ. that age, they yeah. knew something bothered them, but they weren't sure what it was. <laughs> <laughs> These luscious locks. I don't know what it is about. Where did you grow up in Dublin? Where are you from? We're actually from Drada. Oh, are you? Yeah, yeah. So, but I I moved <laughs> up here with my grandmother when I was like fifteen. So, you know, I went to school in Dublin and I definitely got serious <laughs> abuse for the accent. Like the fair play to you. Fair play to you for losing Because I was now. the only bloke from, like, outside Dublin in school I went to, you know? Right, and yeah, yeah. The lads, man, like, even would be getting, like, beans and chips at lunchtime. The boys would just... <laughs> Ripped the piss out of me to like everything I'd say it all like hey, yeah. proper, and that's the thing with the dwa oh, the accent the does get a little bit weird yeah. on the tongue you know and the, the boys don't pronounce <laughs> any of the r's or the t's or like mas mas hey, man dad, it is this. sounds like you've been in an accident though doesn't it like a bit like your Yo, jaws on, your jaws been broken like I gotta you know? go back to draw them man I don't get to, I don't get, to, I get to cross words now. <laughs> And I'll say you ratted us out to the bear. <laughs> Be like, boys, put down the sickles. <laughs> Don't hurt me. I'm an innocent man. So you moved up, and then when when did comedy? Was it arts you did in college, or what? What drew you towards teaching slash being in Shakespearean stuff and all the rest of it? Oh man, I think I wanted to be an actor when I was younger. I liked the idea of it, but suppose coming. Uh, background I did whatever my parents were like you want to be like an actor fuck that so the compromise was like well what about you do a degree in English and history you'll be doing fuck all anyway you can do this acting (laughs) stuff so yeah I kind of did a little bit in uh in uni but not really like just it's a bit all over the place partying and all that but Joined a few drama societies. Trying to get laid, too. You yeah, know of course. I mean? like, like, standard it, practice. Like, yeah. Not, like, you got to diversify. Get into the clubs. Yeah. Pin the herd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know You're not going to get a standard outside looking in, like. That's it. Smoking fags know? with the boys. That's Ain't going to fucking do it. Didn't really work out too well, but... Uh, 
<laughs> Even with that was fabulous luck. Every had the same idea. There's a lot of competition. But <coughs> the other thing was, uh, in reality, man, like I kind of thought, ah, oh, that's it. What? Even I, <coughs> when I say I want to do acting, I didn't know if I'd ever make a living out of it. But any of that, I just did a couple of things. I enjoyed them, the camaraderie of yeah. doing theatre, everyone doing their own stuff. You prepare it in a certain way, mm. all hang out together, all that shit. And then uh, when I was in school, I did a play with a guy called Emmett Scanlon. Do you know Emmett? Yes, that sounds very familiar. So Emmett, um, I, we were in Lord of the Rings together. He was Boromir and I was Gimli because we could both grow facial hair at 15. You did Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings, yeah. And uh, with a, an amazing teacher called Jerry Hall, who just loved all that and. What a legend! Because nice. I mean, yeah. t- the, the the usual fair is like my fair lady, fucking you know, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Like, and it's oh, he, he went, went all and, out. Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah, it was a monster. But then you know, uh, I was in uni in Maynooth with him, and uh, after uni, I went traveling and I was teaching away and volunteering, and doing all sorts of. Um, Emmett went into the acting game, and then a guy called Adam Fergus. I don't know, you probably know him too, man, like uh, an actor in town. But I've known em- uh, Adam since I was five. Our mothers, our friends, he's from the same street at, as me at home. And both those lads started getting work as actors. Right. So when I came back from traveling, I kind of went, oh, I'd love to do that sort of stuff. So I started right at the bar. The boys were like pros, whatever. I started doing like... Yeah, any sort of profit share that would have me and all this sort of, yeah, like uh, there was acting classes in the attic. I think Emmett sent me up with that. And actually Emmett got me my first ever, he was asked to do a short film and he kind of muscled me in to play his best friend in the Brilliant. short film. And got me up and going, man. And then Adam actually was with Lisa Richards, would introduce me to... Lisa Richards Excellent. down the line, you know what I mean? So and I suppose it was kind of that too. I wonder if the lads hadn't ever gotten involved with I've ever had the balls, you know? Yeah. It was more when I saw them doing it, I went, well, I'm going to give it a go. And, you and know, I, was, I can always come back to teaching, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, since moving to the UK, like in fairness, to you, you've you been signed and everything by the comedy store. Yeah, that yeah. That was, I remember you posting about that. Like, and it was like <laughs> I can remember. You did, you posted up about it. Like, it was like, cool. That is actually a cool cat, like you know what I mean, because yeah. it was it, it wasn't long. Well, like I still had it in my memory. I was like, the night you were telling me the the dose, the pain, the hole you had, missing out on that, whatever. Like, and I was like, well, that's class to hear. You know what I mean? That you know that you got signed by the fucking comedy store. I didn't even fully realize that they actually, you know, signed people. Like, yeah, ah, that was I was lucky. Friends of mine bigged me up to them in there, and like. Like everything, man. Like, no one is getting anywhere on their own. <laughs> no. You know? Like, you're, you're just not. And, you know, um, when I first went to England, I had the benefit of a few years of experience here doing the Kilkenny, Cats yeah. Laughs, the Ivy Gardens, all that stuff. Brian Berry and Aiken was always real good to me, kind of a bit of a champion. I mean, like, guys that come into town, he'd linked me up to do their supports. Like, everything from... I did the warm-up for the puppetry of the penis did boys... Did you? <laughs> to, ...to, like, the big, you know, famous dude coming into headlock. Like, uh, oh, wow. And, yeah, like... Um, from doing those then, when I went to England, guys were just able to say to club owners, look, just keep an eye on this fella. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. all you'll ever get, you Yeah, know? yeah, like, yeah. He won't let you down, like, there, yeah, yeah. Like... If you're not cutting it, like, they cut you. Man. Yeah. And even if they're good friends with you, it's just so competitive, you know? Of course. Christ almighty. And I can't, I w- we can't, uh, we'll have to go do a show in a minute, but I can't let you finish without, I read that you're, have you written a novel? Yeah, I wrote a novel that never sold. <laughs> but is it available online? Uh, it must no, be I, these I, days. I, do you know what happened? I got one publisher very keen to, well, they told me they were, but you don't know whether people have been nice to you or whatever, because of a few times. But uh, this crowd were like, okay, just change this and that and review it again. And man, I just had hit breaking point with it. 
I can, just yeah. went, oh, fuck this. So like, did you nearly fall out in love with the old, you'd written and went, that's fucking, that's exactly what I wanted. And of course, yeah. then they're getting you to tweak it then. But they're probably right, man. But I got to break it out and give it one last twirl. We need now. to see this book, John. What, what roughly, can you give us a rough idea? What, where, when's it set? Is it based around a guy with amazing fucking hair, is it? It is, yeah. It's <laughs> set in a L'Oreal factory. <laughs> and, Two lonely farmers <laughs> who were working in the factory for I'm a little bit of extra money because the crop, the yield, hasn't been great that year. <laughs> so you get involved in a satanic cult. Jesus Christ, yeah. I need this book. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty full on. And then the angels arrive. No. Yeah, and they all talk it out because <laughs> communication and clarity is the key for, to life. That's my message. That's my overarching <laughs> I got it even in that snapshot you said. Yeah, and then the angels carried him up to heaven and uh, (laughs) it's it's, it's banging. Do you want a copy? Yes, I fucking do. I I want it signed. I brought a few in. I brought a few. (laughs) Everywhere. You bring a few (laughs) everywhere. Uh, John Lynn, this has been special. And a nice way to start an old chat before uh, before we go do a show. There you go. Why the hell not? Thank you very much, dude. Cheers, Tommy. Cheers. My thanks, of course, to the great and powerful John Lynn. Fair play to him. How cool is that voice? It's ridiculous, isn't it? Anyway, if it's your first time listening, please hit subscribe. You know yourself, this is out a couple of times a week, so it'll be in your ear holes. Uh, give it a rating as well, if the applica- application that you're listening on allows you to to, uh, to rate, whether it's iTunes or the podcast app or one of those ones, give it a high rate. Give it a high rate, or don't give it a rating at all. Because one won't, uh, it won't benefit me, bar the high ratings benefit, because at least then more people less listen to the podcast. Give it a share if you don't feel like rating. Just share it on whatever platform, whether it's Facebook or Snapchat or whatever you're into go for it you can also follow me on any of the social platforms just type in Tom O'Mahony Comedy that'll find it on almost everything bar chatty snaps which is Tom Bear O'Mahony and if you want to hit me long form go to buckshotpodcast at gmail.com or just head on over to tomomahony.com you'll find the contact Yoki there anyway when you're looking for anything else right go on away enjoy the rest of your day and I'll chat to you next week